Hi, so glad you could make it to part two of the video. This video does take a little bit more of a serious tone than the first one, but for me, this is my favorite part of recording this video and about spreading this message because it gets a lot more into why many of the people in our grandparents' generation may hold the beliefs that they do um, surrounding like the LGBT and stuff like that. Before I talked about how with my grandma she accepted me, but like this is just like, you know, the road to acceptance, you know, with my grandfather. But yeah, I hope you enjoy the video and um, it is a little bit more serious, but to me, I think it's a little bit more interesting on that note. Anyways, um, that's it. For this introduction, please enjoy the video. And why am I standing way over here, Nate? I had a pretty strong relationship with my grandparents before I came up. I would always go down to my grandparents' house because they just, they just lived down the block from me. I would spend time with my grandparents and listen to my grandma's stories and listen to my grandpa talk and I really appreciated a lot of what they had to teach me and after coming out I was able to hold on to that a lot but with my grandpa though on the other hand for him he had a hard time accepting it because like he grew up um he grew up traditional, but he also went to boarding school at a, at a, at a pretty young age as well. And so I think from his experiences in boarding school, that really shaped his opinion on gay people and, you know, gay people are, are weird and, and it's not right and stuff like that. And even before coming out, I remember when I was in middle school, there was one day that I stayed home and unannounced on that day, my grandparents actually, um, they came by and I think my uncle Lawrence also came by as well. So it was, it was like unannounced. I didn't know they were coming. I was pretending to be sick that day actually. <laughs> so I just kind of hid in the back room. But one of the conversations I remember overhearing, you know, my, my mom was talking with my grandparents and my uncle, they were all talking in the living room. And one of the, one of the conversations I remember I don't know how this came up, but something about like um, gay people came up or something. And uh, I used to remember the words so vividly, but I can't remember them now. But I remember one of the things that my grandpa said was like, oh, if any of my grandkids are gay, then I, I can never accept them or something like that. I can't remember exactly word for word. I used to have that like burned in my brain, but I mean, you know, as time went on, I kind of, I forgave him a long time ago for that. But at the time, like, I really remembered word for word what he said. And it was something along the lines of, I could never love my grandchildren if they were gay or something like that. And I was crying when I heard that. And, you know, at the time I knew I was gay, but I hadn't come out yet. And I was really struggling with it at that time. And that's, I overheard him say that, you know, and that really hurt me. <laughs> This isn't to do with my grandpa, but I remember like um, right after he said that, my uncle was, was kind of funny. My uncle was like, he's like, oh, I have gay customers. They're, they're, they're good people. They're, 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 you know, they're just like us. I, they buy, they buy expensive stuff. And so he was like, I, I'm, I'd be fine with it. I wouldn't care. And that, I always, that made me happy there. But, you know. So fast forward, like I come out, you know, my grandpa was having a hard time with it. I, I wasn't surprised and I um, kind of didn't really go visit my grandparents as much at the, during that time, right after I came out. So like I told you, like my, my mom was actually the one who told me what my grandma had said. That's because I didn't really go down to my grandparents' house for a while. I kind of just wanted to avoid it, you know, I just didn't really want to have that conversation and to, to feel, you know, to feel that, I guess, like, to know that they know, you know, and be there in the same house. It's just like, I just did, I just rather avoid it. But anyways, it was like, it was weird for a while, but then like I went down and, you know, my mom let me know that my, uh, eventually I guess my grandpa kind of came to accept it and he, he, he still loved me. I guess probably, I don't even know what happened, but my grandma must have talked to him or something. Something, I don't, I don't really, I don't really know how he came to turn around a little bit or he came to accept it more. But I remember one time I, 
I, I still would not talk to them openly about it. Like I wouldn't acknowledge it in their presence. Neither from no, neither my grandparents nor myself would acknowledge it. So slowly it came. I started visiting them more and more, and then. I remember there was this one instance in particular where uh, my grandpa needed help editing his book again. So what he what usually happens when I edit his um, books or whatever he writes. So what would happen is he would leave me with his writing. He'd be like, "Okay, read it," and then he would sometimes he would be in the room so he could answer my questions, or he would kind of like you know go about his house and I'd be there editing. Um, but there's this one time he wrote something and I was I was there reading it. And a lot of, he always writes about like Navajo culture and, and his um, experiences growing up and different legends and stuff. And that's how I, I've i learned a lot of the stories that I know. But um, one time he let me read something he wrote. And when I was reading it, I was going through it and it was the usual stuff about like Navajo legends and Navajo stories and Navajo history and stuff. And then I came across a paragraph and in that paragraph, there was a, a passage about Natle. And uh, I can't remember exactly word for word what it said, but, but I was saying like, you know, Natle have always, Natle have always been, they've always been, they've always had a special place within our tribe and, and our people respect, used to respect them. And our people used to see that as a, as a sacred thing. That's how it was within our culture. We were taught not to make fun of them. And, you know, they basically just talking about how Nadle were, were valued by our people and how that's something that has been forgotten over the years. And I think, you know, it was kind of, I he knew I was going to read that. And so, and, you know, I kind of interpreted that as a way of like him acknowledging me in a, as being Nadle and acknowledging Nakle people in his own writing and, and acknowledging that part of the culture, which, um, you know, I think probably my grandma reminded him of what, how our, our culture used, used to view that. And then probably, you know, there's some teachings that he probably, you know, he could have suppressed or forgotten about or ignored. Uh, I don't exactly know. I haven't actually talked about with that with him because I, you know, like I said, I, I never actually had that direct conversation with them, which I think I will actually. So that will be another, that will be another video. But anyways, um, so like, uh, that was the first time I feel like I, I actually read and he, he acknowledged it. And, um, I think one of the things that I learned from that was that there are people who know those teachings and who grew up with those teachings and stuff like that and they were taught not to make fun of men that act feminine or whatever but what you have to understand too with Navajo people is that a lot of our grandparents have the teachings that they were taught when they were young but there was also a lot of things that they learned when they were at boarding school and a lot of things that they were shamed for. Speaking Navajo was a big thing that a lot of um, older people were shamed for and just their way of life was the the culture that they were brought up in was just viewed in boarding schools as being totally backwards and also something within boarding school that happened a lot was they would separate they would separate the boys with the boys and the girls with the girls and so if there was like a somebody who was gay back then they would be mocked by all the boys because they were now in a western school setting and so they they picked up on these things and one of the things that they one of the punishments that they had in boarding school for boys who ran away from these early boarding schools on the reservation one of the punishments that if a boy tried to run away from the dorm because the navajo like the navajo kids would be separated from their parents separated from their culture so if one of the boys was caught when he's trying to run away or if he was, you know, caught somewhere else, what they would do to that boy is they would take him back to the school and they would dress him up as a girl and they would put him in front of the class and they would leave him up to the mercy of the students and the other students would be encouraged to make fun of that, that 
kid, that student. Likewise with the girls, if they, if they misbehaved in some type of way, that was another form of punishment was for them to be put into boys' clothes and, and be mocked and laughed at in front of the class. <clears throat> so there was already this culture built up in the schools, in the boarding schools. The Navajo kids, they would be raised in that, you know, because they wouldn't be allowed to go home and to experience the culture. So a lot of Navajo grandparents and our grandparents who went to these boarding schools, that was their experience with that. And that in turn came to shape what they think about um, gay people. Somebody like me, who's feminine and who who has certain mannerisms and stuff like that, they, they grew up feeling that, they grew up feeling that shame, like if they were put into girls' clothes or they grew up learning how to make fun of Fun of that and so like that me knowing that what I do what I try to do is I try to understand you know why people are the way they are and so like I what I could have done was when I first heard that from my grandpa like that he would never love his grandchild if he was gay I knew that my grandpa was was coming from a certain upbringing that he endured and I know f from what he's told me is that boarding school was traumatic for him. It was a traumatic experience, you know, and I understood that his views um, on that subject, on, on gay people, was not a reflection of how he felt about me, but rather a reflection of his own upbringing. And, you know, that's, that's the same way that I, um, <clears throat> I think about how a lot of Navajo people were raised and how a lot of um, Navajo men are these days. You know, they, they were taught a lot of these things from Western culture. Even if they were, you know, raised not to do a certain thing, you know, in their own daily life, they were confronted with conflicting messages. And so most people, unfortunately, most kids because you're just a little kid and you're learning to already to make fun of to make fun of um boys wearing clothes and to feel ashamed of those things and to make fun of the 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 guys who act what what they call gay and what they call feminine and stuff like that that's just something i think that's um that's always that level of understanding that i always try to bring and when i'm talking with you know, the, the, my grandparents' generation. So that's how it was with me coming out to my grandpa. My grandpa, as I, I was kind of confronted with, with a lot of that, but I was also able to overcome a lot of those, um, a lot of those traumas that, you know, he, from boarding school, he passed on to me. But I think now there was a, a resolution that was able to be made because Luckily, my grandma was, um, you know, she, she, she's a very compassionate person, a very kind person. She's always been like that. And so, you know, I think her, the way she was able to, you know, remember and reflect on her own grandma's teachings, which, you know, she had, you know, probably pushed under the rug for so many years too. Through her, you know, reaching back into her childhood and to what her grandma said, um, she was able to accept me like that and I think that kind of led the way for my grandpa to follow too and so now I, I I have a good relationship with my grandparents it's not not a completely open relationship like you know and that's 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 mainly on my decision just because you know I just <laughs> I just kind of choose me I just choose to keep things you know there's certain things that I like to talk about with my grandparents and other things that you know I'd rather just not um but that's that's just all that's just all myself learning to to be more accepting of who I am and more comfortable with myself and <clears throat> so that's just um that but that was my experience with um <clears throat> my own grandparents and there's a lot of other things that you know I learned from talking to other other Navajo people and 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 learning from you know what's funny about my grandpa is that he would say one thing but then in the stories that 
I would learn from him, it would say a different thing. So that's where I learned about Nadlez and in his stories. But in in his actual life, he was um it was hard for him to accept me. But in the stories, in the traditional Navajo stories that he that I he would tell me that he would share with me, you know, these were the things that he said. And um but anyways, yeah, that's that's all I had to share today. Hopefully that could be un helpful for other um, young Navajo people who are struggling with their sexuality and struggling to find acceptance from their families. Fortunately for me, my, my family was able to accept me and love me still, but a lot of other people I know, their own families, you know, whether they became Christian or they're traditional, but they, they don't, they don't have that teachings of Nagleya with them and they don't fully recognize that that part of the culture. I think that's just um, something that I thought could be valuable to share for other people and even for myself too, just kind of being able to think about it. And also for other people too um, who, you know, are learning about this whole thing about, you know, what Nakle is and, and gays or and how Native Americans view, view gay people and other people of LGBT stuff. Um, but yeah, that, that's just my story. That's all I can say about that. That's all I can say. Akuta, shahat.